All right, this is a video uh, reviewing primarily this television being used as a monitor, secondarily this gigabyte motherboard, and uh, thirdly, kind of the, the processor as well. Definitely had some hiccups in the process, but I am pretty tickled with the final result. Uh, the Scepter TV, uh, the best data I could find was a couple years old on whether or not these TVs work well as a computer monitor. Um, there were some hiccups to begin with, but uh, after getting all the settings right and figuring out where my bottlenecks were, things seemed to be working really well. This is the television. I just got it a couple of days ago. A remarkable price. Seemed too good to be true. When I first hooked it up, it looked very mediocre. All I had to do was turn the sharpness all the way down. That helped a ton. And then I turned the brightness down by 10. The blacks were kind of gray, but with that brightness setting, it seemed to fix that pretty quick. Uh, when I built this PC, really the first PC I've ever built, I've modified plenty before, but I started with this motherboard. It was another hard Google search, was finding motherboards that supported HDMI 2.0 with their integrated graphics. Just a cheapskate, I don't game or anything. Uh, my children play Minecraft, and they don't care how quality that is, and I surf the web and write papers. So I just wanted a big monitor. It didn't have to be super ultra-fast or anything. So this is the motherboard that I decided on, and it's got HDMI 2.0 support, and that has worked fine. And then the Cabby Lake processors now support 4K at 60 hertz as well. And so as far as the picture goes, I am very happy. Uh, so you can see pixel for pixel, everything is very crisp. There's no over scanning problems or anything. The colors seem good to me, although I don't have a terribly discerning eye. There were some hiccups that uh, were hard to overcome. The one is uh, with this rig, the BIOS on this motherboard as it was shipped could not handle this processor and so it was not booting up it was not posting when i first put everything together um, but you need a processor to update the bios so i brought it to micro center for 30 dollars. they put in an old processor flashed my bios and then everything booted up just fine the second thing is the some of these motherboards ship with the upgraded um or BIOS isn't the word, the firmware, the upgraded firmware on the graphics chip that supports the, supports the HDMI 2.0. That was a doozy through a lot of forums. I figured out the reason I couldn't get that software to run, the mega chip software, is because I had an old graphics driver installed, buried somewhere. So I downloaded an AMD removal tool, wiped everything, and then I was able to upgrade the firmware. Um, but the biggest trick was, when I first put it all together, it seemed beautiful, but when I looked up and at this info screen, I realized I was only getting 30 hertz. And the graphics card said it, it supported 60 hertz, but when I would go and set the graphics to 60 hertz, uh, and I hit apply, the TV would say that there was no signal. And so in this uh, HD 630 graphics panel, this refresh rate here, which I don't know why it defaults to 59, it works at 60 now. But if I would move it anything higher than 30, it would say no signal. Uh, through some experimentation, I realized it was a bandwidth issue, which HDMI 2.0 shouldn't have a bandwidth issue. Uh, to solve that, it was a small workaround, which is not ideal. I just had to free up the lanes, if you can call them that, on the HDMI channel by turning off, by disabling the Intel display audio. So see, that is disabled right now. If I enable this and the sound tries to take its bandwidth back on the HDMI connection, the computer will go back to no signal. Thankfully, I don't need to run sound to my television. The television speakers are terrible but that's not why I bought it. So it was a functional workaround for me. Something isn't right. I don't know if it's with Intel or with the motherboard, but for me, it's a non-issue because I don't care to carry sound through the HDMI panel. Uh, eventually, I might try to hook it all up to a receiver. I think I'll just use the optical cable and everything should be fine. But 
that's the gist of it. There's a lot of information here that I couldn't find online. So my, my ultimate conclusions are for the price to the average consumer, this TV works incredibly well as a monitor. Um, and everything else works too, with a couple workarounds and a few headaches as far as firmware goes. Thanks for watching.